Hi Elkie. This lesson is about this magazine. It's called Architectural Digest and they abbreviated it to AD um, to be more modern. Now even though it's called Architectural Digest, it's almost always not about architecture. It's about interior design and the pages of it are ex almost exclusively interiors of all different types of houses. However, as a rule, they have one thing in common. They fall into the category of what I was talking about, about the pages that you had created, in that budget is not an issue with these interior designers. They consider that what they are uh, doing is they are designing the rooms and uh, the furniture and whatever for people with unlimited budgets and so consequently even on the cover of this magazine it says um, remakes a landmark San Francisco mansion. It's all mansions but it's also very interesting. Now what I have done is I've selected just some pages and some pages I selected because I do not like what is shown and I, I uh, will try and say why and other pages I've selected because I like what is shown and in some cases I will zoom the camera out so that you can see the whole page and others I'll zoom it in so we can see details. So now to go to the first page which is this. Now here's a page, here's a room, somebody's living room. Um, I'll zoom in on it a little bit. What do I think of this room? I do not like it. Do I have a reason? Yes. It seems to me that they either painted the ceiling black or an extremely dark brown color. And then they hung on the wall a, a square painting which is either black or a very dark brown. And the whole scene uh, makes me feel depressed and sort of ominous and I think it's a little bit unpleasant looking and it really surprises me that they would think that anyone would think that this is an attractive room. Um, that's all I have to say about that one. So we'll put that down as a uh, negative. Now comes this page. Now sometimes what I'm going to talk about is what the room looks like. Oh, it went out of focus. Let's back it up a little bit. Well, that was a long pause, but I don't want to start over again. So I'll say this about this. Sometimes what I have to say is not about what's in the picture, but about the picture itself. So my opinion about is not about what this is of, but my objection to it is I don't know what it is. I have no idea what these two pages represent. Is that a couch? I can't tell. Up in the upper left hand corner, there's a hand sticking down in. And it says uh, it has the name of a company, and that's all. So this is a negative. I think that this is a bad page because it's two full pages, and I just don't know what it is. Maybe you can tell me. Now we come to this. I'm going to zoom in on this, and not this page, but this page. When I got to this page, I stopped, and I read what it said about it. And that is a good indication with a magazine that something on a page is interesting or you feel positive about it. If you take the time to look around the page and find out information about what's pictured, you know that that has caught your eye and is meaningful to you. So let's, but it's the painting itself, and I'll try and zoom in on it. This artist painted a bunch of chickens and turkeys. And in um, ruins. And it's such an unusual and odd picture that I just thought that what an unusual subject matter and also what an unusual way to present it. The, the, um, the page is of an antique store called Julia Boston Antiques. It's in London someplace. And the um, dresser 
the kind of dresser you'd see in any expensive antique store. And the, the candle holders are very typical, but the painting is most unusual. Now, what about this? And I'm talking about the bookcase. This blue bookcase, very strikingly beautiful. I think that the blue is just a very good choice of color. And the color of the books, um, this kind of green and red, is very attractive. But I don't like it. And I don't like it for this reason. I don't like that they would create an entire library of books based upon the bindings and what color they are. It seems to me that books ought to represent so much of a strong idea that you wouldn't just substitute, I mean, you wouldn't just use them for the color of the bindings. And they're very consistent about this. Notice that the lamp is the same orange as the books. It's like none of these things the lamp, the cabinet, the books have an identity of their own. They're all put together to make an effect. And like, would you walk up and look at the titles of these books and see, try and see what they are? No, it's, in, it's like a library intended for a decorative effect. Now, is there anything at all that I like? Well, I like the chicken paintings. So let's go to another issue. This is another Architectural Digest. And um, I've marked this page, and I'm going to try and zoom in on it. I stopped and I read what this thing was. What it is, is it's for travel. It's a, it's a big, elaborate suitcase that you would take. It's old-fashioned, like a hundred-year-old design. They show the original drawings of it when it was first designed. Um, and the idea here is that a writer or a correspondent or a journalist would take this in his travels and he'd have all his literature, magazines and books in there and it would open up into a shelf that you could put your computer on. And that caught my eye and I read about it and I thought, what an interesting idea. So I had an entirely positive reaction to that image. Now what about this? I put it in here because I don't like it and I don't dislike it. I'm not ambivalent about it, which means I both like it and dislike it. Well, there's only one thing that caught my eye about this, and that was the drapes of this wall. This must be 18 feet high, and the drapes hung from ceiling to floor all that distance to do the windows, which are half that size. So it creates a false a sense of hugeness, although above it might be a different set of windows. But it's, to my eye, very confusing. But I stopped on it and I looked at it and I tried to figure out what is going on here. And then, of course, there's this uh, uh, lamp above, which is just so peculiar looking that um, I had to stop on that one. I neither like it nor dislike it. A closet, a very rich person who has lots and lots of shoes and lots and lots of other things. A closet as big as my living room for uh, uh, their wardrobe. I'll zoom in on it a little bit. And you know, when you see a picture like this, sometimes you think to yourself, I wouldn't mind having a whole bunch of shelves with um, a whole bunch of different shoes and not all uh, like on the floor and under my bed and in the kitchen and under the dining room table and all things like that. But something about this picture got on my nerves. And here's what it is. That crazy lamp up above hanging down. Something like that. A lamp like that. Like, what is it doing there? It's like visually is very annoying shape and that you'd be afraid to that you get stabbed in the head when you're trying to pick out a pair of shoes. So that was also a negative. Here's an ad that shows a, a whole um, 
living room, furniture, table, out in the middle of the wilderness. And a beautiful landscape, although kind of barren. And what I liked about this is the unusualness of the idea of putting a whole room full of furniture out in the out, outside where, you know, it could never be like that because what if it rained or stormed or snowed? So it caught my eye and I thought, what a beautiful uh, sight it is. And look how carefully they balanced the color of the sky, which is not blue. It's like a kind of purpley blue with the color of the furniture, which is purpley blue also. So it's composed like a painting and really catches your eye and you have to think about it and look at it before you turn the page. This is an advertisement for wallpaper. And um, as soon as I saw this page, I thought to myself, ugh, what an awful, awful sight. Can you imagine having to live with this horribly hideous, irritating, confusing wall? And um, I'm going to introduce a philosophical idea here because uh, we talked about it before. You know the idea of Plato's absolutes or the perfect idea of Plato's idea of the perfect shape, like the perfect circle or the perfect triangle or the perfect rectangle. The thing about those shapes is that you can close your eyes and you can take pleasure in picturing it. And I apply the same principle to a room. If I look at a room, close my eyes, can I picture it? If I can picture it, very likely I'm going to like it. If I can't picture it in my mind, it's because there's something unpleasant or irritating or obnoxious about it. And that's how I feel about this crazy wallpaper. Like, I can't close my eyes and see the space in my mind. But also, if I open my eyes, I want to shove them again. Um, this is uh, just somehow too complicated to talk about, so I'm going to skip over it. And what about this? Well, here's what I have to say about this. As a page in a magazine, it's very interesting. You can't help but stop on this page and look at it. So as a page in a magazine, it's fascinating. But just imagine if I were to do this back wall in my studio and you were to come to visit and you were to open a door and on the back wall you would see this, you would think, oh dear, Richard, Richard uh, doesn't know what he's up what he's doing here because this is ridiculous. You can't live with a thing like that. But this is a room and people live with this. And so as a room, I can't stand it. As a page in a magazine, I think it's fascinating and interesting. And I love the way they made a face out of that cabinet and the doors would open and, you know, like whew, then this giant gold mouth with teeth. It's fascinating, but it's ridiculous to think that someone would want to see that when they got up in the morning, day after day after day. I mean, after a month, you'd call the interior designer and say, well, I don't know how much it's going to cost, but I would like something more soothing to look at than this thing. So that's what I have to say about that page. This, well, I apply the same rule I did to the earlier one when I said, what would Plato think of this? Plato would look at this and say that, there's something that if you try to picture this as an absolutely perfect thing, you couldn't even begin. I mean, what's that table? That, what's that table? That table is a mirror image of that table. How? Like, it's like a fun house. Where does the stairs go? You have no sense. Why is this wall pink and this one, this pa pattern? So like, maybe I'm just too classical, but if I, if this was my room, I would shut the door and never go in there. Now, I think you have the idea of what I'm driving at. And so I don't want to make this go on and on forever. But my assignment is I have sent you an architectural digest and you'll get it 
probably after Thanksgiving, and I want you to go through it and say, I like this, I don't like this, I don't care about this so much, I'm ambivalent about that, but the important thing is to try and say why. That is the, it's very easy to say that you like something. It's very much harder to say that you, the reason that you, you like it or not. It's very easy to say that you don't like it, that don't like a thing. But to explain why you don't like it, that is the difficulty. But all I expect you to do is, for starters, make judgments. Say what you like, and, you, and uh, uh, like, uh, if possible, write a sentence for each page that you select. How many pages is up to you? And, you know, when you go through one of these magazines, almost a lot of the pages one has no reaction to at all. I'm, I'm interested in the ones where you have an immediate strong reaction to. And that is your lesson for this week. Have a nice Thanksgiving.